Hey everyone, I know Thanksgiving is next week and we're gonna see tons of promo codes out there and Cyber Monday codes. And you know, I decided that why not just run our Black Friday code for the rest of the month? And what we're doing is we're giving our biggest discount we've ever gone given off the Nerd Herd because I feel like this is a really crucial time to join the Nerd Herd where you wanna have the league analyzer, you wanna have those trade calculators, you wanna have, you really wanna have the league analyzer to see where you stand in this league and where you can make these trades easier. Have full access on the Sleeper app with the Dynasty GM tool. Have full access to the Dynasty Nerds film room. Have full access to the Nerd Score, which every single year the Nerd Score has got better and better and more accurate and outproducing draft capital. Uh, you can argue that we're doing better than GMs out here. I won't say we, cause it's Garrett and Jared that really pumped that through. But yes, we have the promo code right now for Black Friday. You can use until the end of the year. And that promo code is Black Friday 2024. Black Friday 2024, it's gonna give you 25% off your Nerd Herd subscription, whether you do the monthly or the yearly. I don't know if it's just for the yearly or not. I gotta look at the details at, cause I just, I don't always read the fine print. I could be wrong, but right now you're gonna save 25%. It's the biggest discount we have ever given at Dynasty Nerds. You can save an absolute massive amount of money. And now I'll tell you what, for how much money you're saving, the price that you'll pay is worth the film room alone, where we're just loaded up on all 22 film. If there is a rookie that you wanna watch his tape and you can watch his entire game on five minutes because that's how our film room works, we cut down each player's film. So all you do is watch every snap that he's in on. So you can watch a running back in five minutes. That's the worth, that juice is worth the squeeze all by itself. We have the best film room in the business. If you don't believe me, get in there, try it out, check it out, get access to the Nerd Herd, get the bonus podcasts, get all the tools we provide, help support Dynasty. Black Friday, 2024, that's the promo code, saving 25%. Go out there and get a discount. Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerd Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? It's going good. We're remote. Uh, Matt's not here. It's sick. He's sick. It's hence why we're remote. Yep. Uh, so that's kind of nice. You know, I'm just sitting here by myself, which is good because I'm exhausted. Yeah. I mean, it's look, it, the convenience of technology to allow us to still be able to do this is awesome. But you do lose a little bit of the magic. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'll watch Disney World videos after this. Get it all there back. You go. Make See a Tinkerbell it. flying around. It'll bring it back to me. <laughs> that was a long weekend, man. I went to New York. I uh, had a little guys weekend. Went a little bender. So uh, just carried over now for that Browns game on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> oh, my Atlanta. Uh, dude, what a big win for uh, my Cleveland Browns. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited. Uh, I had a friend, and they were like, "Don't talk bad about the Ravens on your podcast." I was like, "You're out, you're out of your mind." Of course, Dude. I would talk bad about the Ravens. My team I, is, my team has a small chance to be tied for the number one seed after this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think people outside of Cleveland understand how badly it hurts that a team was a Cleveland team and then taken from us and then won a Super Bowl. Like yeah, not too far after. Right, that hurts. Yeah, so I'll, she, I just, I don't like them. I never will. No, never will. <laughs> I was like, listen, I can like players on the team. Like I'm a big J.K. Dobbins fan. I like Mark Andrews. Sure. Respect the heck out of Lamar, but like the team itself? Nope. Ah, just fall in the ocean. That would have to re <laughs> relocate. Like not like the team with the players, you know? Like, right. Uh, we were talking last week, like you get uh, happy when people don't succeed. Or, right. <laughs> I just hope that stadium falls into a body of water somewhere. <laughs> Random were, sinkhole. What? So we were weird. like, what are your thoughts on global warming? And I'm like, how close is the Raven Stadium <laughs> to the beach? <laughs> flood the dams. Wait, is it flood the dams or break the dam? Yeah, break the dams. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the flood's behind the dams, right? Right. Both both work. I, I don't even give a damn. Uh, so <laughs> big week this week, though. No injuries. No major injuries. Uh, probably could be the healthiest week we saw all year. Yeah, there's a there's a few guys here and there, but not too many super superstars. 
and not too serious for those that were injured. So it's, I mean, what it really means is that next week and we're just going to get just crushed with injuries probably, but uh, a lot of, a lot of mild injuries this week and a lot of players coming back. We'll talk about that on the uh, newly uh, installed uninjury report that Matt, Matt brought to us last it's week. It's too good not to keep going. It's, it's just, too good. Uh, the way the show's evolved over the last 10 years is like some things just pop up and stick around a while. You they know? do. Whether you never be a, know. But whether it be a pair of crystal balls, uh, <laughs> whether it be a hashtag, maybe it's a, it's a word or a sentence I can't pronounce <laughs> or mispronounce. I was sitting here today and I was like, I can't believe I got dysentery wrong uh, <laughs> last week. Like sometimes I just go away I'm like, and I'll, I'll know what I'm talking about. And I go after a show, I'm like, ah. Oh, it's because my brain's racing too fast. I got too much stuff going on in this noggin. But yeah, it's a big week when the uninjury report. So we got some players to talk about. A lot of quarterback talk on this show. Yeah. Uh, and then the Nerd Herd show, we're going to jump right in and talk about what? Nerd Herd questions? So it's it's basically an AMA for us. I, I put it to the Nerd Herd and I was like, hey, we'll answer some trade questions, but it doesn't have to be trade questions. Anything that you guys want to know. So we have a... a some philosophical dynasty questions as well to uh, to get to to answer. So uh, I always I always enjoy those mailbag type of episodes because uh, it gets our brains going in different directions that we wouldn't have even normally thought to go. Oh, I think they're fantastic episodes. When people sometimes hear like, "Oh, this is a listener question show," like those could be some of the best shows because the information it draws out and and you get that raw natural reaction because there's no prep to it, right? Like right. You're, just, you're answering to people's questions. I'm not laying down analytics. Those analytic guys, they'll sit there and study and give you numbers all day. All I care about is W's, and that's what I do here. Let's bring those W's. The, the, the funny thing is, one of the questions uh, is is a clear W for you. So you'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see what uh, one of the one of the questions that was asked. Oh, I can't wait. Is it about like maybe like my handsomeness? Maybe. Uh, surprisingly enough, your athletic ability. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I mean, what? What? I didn't see it coming, but I love it. Listen, just because I like take care of myself and I look, I look, I look back and I remember like, so I never played organized baseball. And I, after I got back from Ohio state, like I got asked to be on a softball team and like back right. I got Ohio state. Like it's probably the most in shape I've ever been. Right. Like just, yeah, you know, I was just jacked. I worked yeah, out college. all the time with Matt, you know, and I, I came back on this team and I remember my first at bat, like I never played organized baseball. And I remember, Everybody turns around and like, back up, back up. And I'm like, man, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive this ball over the fence. Popped it up to like the pitcher. It was, it was bad. It was bad. It was my first and last year. At least year you made contact and didn't swing and miss. Yeah, I never realized how hard baseball was uh, attempting to play for the first time at 23 when you never played when you're little because you didn't have a dad to play catch with you. <laughs> or wherever side gets signed up for uh, organized sports. I, I didn't realize like you actually had to know how the ball came off the bat where to go in the outfield. And people were just like, they were, they'd yell at me back or forward. And I would just listen in. Just listen to them. Yeah. To say I was uh, the worst player in the team may or not be, not be accurate. I, don't know. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor to die. Well, we'll get but, to discuss that uh, a little bit more in the nerd herd. <laughs> no, he won't. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to myself. This is different. That was 20 years ago, dude. I'm 44 now. I'm probably way more athletic than I was back then. I there have you kids. Go. That's usually how athleticism works. Usually, as you age, you get more athletic. Yeah, yeah. Cause I had kids. I had two <laughs> boys, and I would like, I would watch that. I would take them to practices, and I would. That's go, that part's fair. That part's I would fair. play catch with them, baseball, football, and you know, them themselves. You know, toss them up, catch them, make sure they don't hit the ground. There you go. Yeah, I do it with my niece and nephews. I scare my sister-in-law's death because I toss them like as high as I possibly can. <laughs> I'm so confident in these mitts. Look like, at they're that. humans. Like, I'm not going to let a human drop. There you go. You I mean, should, be, was, you should, you should try out. Unless it was a little raven. <laughs> so let's get, Garrett, enough, enough about my past. Can we get into some of these injury updates? All right, guys, I got to tell you about our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, you sign up at Underdog, claim your mystery pick em, Plus, up to a $100 deposit match. All you got to do is go sign up at Underdog and use that promo code NERDS. Make a deposit, head to the lobby, find out who or which player is your pick'em special that you got, and start racking in 
that money. Or rake it in, however you want to do it. Racking what are you raking. going for? Get signed up, underdogfantasy.com or by the app store with the promo code NERDS. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to that $100. And guess what? There is more. We are still offering that Dynasty Nerds free Full Nerd Herd one-year subscription. We are currently live on Sleeper, so you get full access to the app on there. You get the Dice Nerds film room. Right now, we have more All-22 tape that you can even get your eyes on and handle it a day. That's how much tape is in there. It's going to take you a full day to watch it all. That's a, And they're quick games. Uh, so you get Dice Nerds film room. You get the Nerd score. There's never a better time of the year to join the Nerd Herd than now as you start to get ready for that rookie season because that's what we're here for. That's where we actually dominate in this industry. We dominate our rookie content. We dominate our rookie analysis, and we help you put, be put in the best position not only to win championships for the short, short term, long term. And with your, our friends' help from our friends at Underdog Fantasy, all you got to do is deposit 10 bucks, use your promo code NERDS, and you're going to get a free year of that. Yes, let's get into our present on this show. Uh like we said, only a few to go over. Michael Thomas, he had a weird weekend just in general uh, off the field as well. But uh, MCL sprain, looking like a two- to three-week recovery. He's not somebody that you've been uh, starting with confidence necessarily, but he's been a flex play type of guy this year. It looks like he's going to miss a little time. I don't think this moves the needle much uh, as far as anything other than maybe A.T. Perry getting involved a little bit more. Yeah, A.T. Perry actually played a ton of snaps. Um, had a, Didn't have a lot of catches. I think it was only two catches, but he did score the touchdown, the rookie A.T. Perry there for New Orleans. And, you know, I think we'll talk about Derek Carr next, but you go back to Michael Thomas is a flex play at best. I mean, he's he's been a shadow of himself. Um, we talked about this a couple of years ago when we were talking to, like, Vig and Alfredo. Um, I believe that's who it was at the Fantasy Football Expo. And they told, you know, because uh, Vig's a doctor, I believe, He's like, yeah, this is, this foot injury is not good. Like, it's hard to come back and be good ever again. And, you know, he's been, if you look at his stats over the years, you, you have these monster, monster, monster from his rookie year on, and it just fell apart. And I know his injury, but, yeah, he's done. So, for a chance for A.T. A- Perry to come in and play, like, 85% of the snaps, and it didn't turn into a lot of production outside of that touchdown, Jameis Winston came in and kind of moved that ball a little bit. So... For, you know, if that if that's going to carry over after buy, if Derek Carr's going to miss some time for the concussion, maybe everybody uh, takes a step forward. Maybe the Rook can get out there. Maybe we'll see uh, Juwan Johnson if he still exists. And, of course, Alave had his best game all year with that fantastic catch in the end zone. It, it was a beaut, almost like he was trying to ride a bike in the air. It was pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah, so for me, I think the biggest news out of the Michael Thomas injury would be Hey, let's see if there's another guy like a rookie, like AT pair that could step up here and kind of establish himself maybe as a fancy football asset. Yeah, you already mentioned Derek Carr. Uh, he's going to be out with a concussion, and there's also reported something going on with the shoulder. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. But they got their bye week this week. Uh, so, so for both of these guys, you weren't getting them this week anyway. Uh, but Jameis Winston, definitely somebody that could be uh, could be a pretty interesting play. Uh, if you know, if Derek Carr does miss some time, yeah, and Derek Carr right, right now got to, you know going right into him has a concussion, has a shoulder injury. Uh, the biggest news there is like Jameis came in, and you know Jameis does what Jameis does. He'll throw some yeah. uh, passes that have you scratching your right. noggin a little bit. Uh, but he had a he the, he moved the offense right. The offense was moving, and it was a spark. And yeah, we'll see that with a lot of backups. But you know, Jameis is somebody that's always been able to push the ball downfield and throw for big yards. And even that pass he had to lob it with that amazing catch. That was a really good throw for him to put the ball um, there for him to come down with it. So interested to see how this all plays out. Like, is there any spot at all? Can Derek Carr lose his job? The Jameis Winston would be insane. That offense with those weapons that they have, they've got to move the sticks. Right. And they're just not doing it right now. Uh, so we'll see what happens Derek Carr. Again, a bye week. And it, it, it's funny because a lot of these injuries are players that are going into bye weeks. Yeah. It is. Even like Taylor Heineke, which is kind of like maybe that hamstring, maybe it's up in the air. Maybe it's not. Uh, we won't know for two weeks. The only person we know for sure will probably miss more after their bye is probably Michael Thomas with the MCL sprain. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about Baker Mayfield real quick. We're actually going to talk about him quite a bit on this episode, so I don't want to get into everything with him just yet. Uh, But injury-wise, 
Uh, he did hurt his thumb. Sounds like he came down, hit his thumb on a helmet. He did finish the game, though, but it was mostly just run plays running out the clock. The severity at this point is unknown, but it doesn't seem like there's too big of a concern uh, for Baker Mayfield. Anything that you're worried about there? I mean, just if he can go hitchhiking or not. Yeah, that's that's important. It It is. I mean, if you got to get A to B, you got no automobile or money. That's that's your number one way of transport, unless you're going to hop on a train and become a hobo. But, no, I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, Baker's looked really good this year, continues to look good. We mentioned every single week because I'm a Baker bro. And that's what that's right. I do. Uh, so, no, I'm not concerned about him least bit. Uh, Alexander Madison, concussion. Uh, Ty Chandler came in uh, during that time. Somebody that we liked a decent amount in his rookie tape. We thought he or Dwayne McBride, who Dwayne McBride not even on the team anymore, but we thought one of those two guys could have a shot to maybe unseat Alexander Madison. And Ty Chandler made the most of his opportunity We'll see if he gets kind of the full complement of the workload. Obviously, Cam Akers now out with that Achilles. So he's going to have a shot to maybe be the guy next week. And if he does well enough in that opportunity, it could be the beginning of the end of Alexander Madison. Yeah, these backup running backs this year that got the, the starter contract, you know, the Tony Pollard, the Alexander Madisons, uh, they've been absolute duds. Duds, which like we, we said before, like we don't see many guys come out here that were backups outside of like Austin Eckler and Michael Turner. If you're not from L, if you're not from the Chargers, the odds of you being a successful running back after the starter leaves is almost zero percent, right? So, um, yeah, Madison, it's it's somebody you're gonna get in there. He's averaging, I think, right around like eleven points per per game. So he he's not a complete disaster, but his his dynasty value is almost nil again, right? He'll, he'll go back to the guy. That's a solid backup that if it gets his opportunities, he's going to help you out. But I don't think the running back of the future is here. So I am excited somewhat to see Ty Chandler. I will say after watching Ty Chandler and in a little a bit amount of him, like I haven't been overly impressed for like a long-term value. He's solid. You know, he's viable in a massive game. But like if he does anything at all in this game, for me, I would probably look at that as an opportunity to sell, right? Like it, sure. the other narrative will be like, oh, does... Ty Chandler now hold on to that job, which at, at worst case scenario for Madison is they're splitting carries. There's no takeover, which makes them both useless at that point. Sure. So like, I think a Ty Chandler good game almost, you know, hobbles both of these when it comes to value. So if that does take place this week, I'm not waiting for the show to come out. I'm immediately going out there and find somebody that needs a running back an offer and to see if I can get a second, a third round pick. If I can just, if I can give you Ty Chandler in my third and move up in the second, that's kind of a move that I'm looking to do. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, not a lot of other injuries really to discuss anything that, that you want to touch on, or should we get to the uninjury report? Yeah, that's where all the juice is. So let's get there. This, this injury report has been the most, which is great news by the way. Like we don't want right. to make it hurt. So this has been the best injury report we've had for 10 weeks. Hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at sleeper. Guess what our app is the mini is live Woo. on sleeper right now the dynasty so gm pretty. you use the analyzer that you can use nice. the uh the the trade calculator and my favorite thing is the inbox right where all your trades from all your sleeper leagues are right there you can actually push trades through the actual sleeper app and right now we could be more excited to be partners with them and right now if you don't know they are doing dfs and i know how many people that play dynasty play dfs as well and right now there's not a better place to play dfs than sleeper they're offering up to 100 times their, your entry the highest payout in the whole dfs market right now you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time all you gotta do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on Sleeper you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share with your friends and get rewarded together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Ooh, um, no way. And get your deposit match and have really? a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues, and now even a Dynasty GM in one spot is fully operational inside Sleeper right now and then when you're a nerd herd member you get that full access to that and remember Dyn you also want to download the dynasty nerds app because they're both in there check it out check our friend sleeper check out our dfs use that promo code nerd get your whole estate <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely but lots and lots of exciting names on the uninjury report so guys that were expecting to come off injury 
this week. So I'm going to read them all, and then we'll go back real quick. So Justin Fields, Devon A. Chan, Pat Fryermuth, Khalil Herbert, Traylon Burks, Matthew Stafford, and possibly Justin Jefferson. So a lot of names there. Let's start with uh, the quarterback, Justin Fields. He's missed almost a month now uh, with that, that hand injury. Might have been able to play this week. It was up in the air. They ended up deciding not to have him go. Bajent, Rich, tell me what you think about this. I think the the media and, and fantasy owners were just really, really anxious to find the next Brock Purdy. And all I kept hearing about was how good Tyler Bajent was. While he had like three touchdowns to six interceptions. The the Thursday night people were like, well, you know, next year it could be Fields, but it could be Bajit. Like I never, I've, I haven't understood any of it, but we're, we're getting Justin Fields back. What are your thoughts on him moving forward the rest of the season? What are you looking to see out of him? Can he keep this job? What are you thinking with Fields? Uh, Yeah. Right out on Bajit. Like this guy, <laughs> he should just be happy that his name was in the tabloids and he got to go out there and play some NFL football. Cause he is not a long-term asset. Right. Um, I don't even honestly know if he's a long-term asset at a backup quarterback, but maybe, I mean, we'll see he was guys fine. come and go. He's just okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as Justin Fields go, I mean, we've got to get back on the field. He has to, I mean, from this game four for the next seven weeks, he has got to play lights out football for him to have any chance whatsoever to be the Bears starting quarterback in 2023. And that's not even a diss on Justin Fields. Sure. It's more of the odds of the Bears having a number one overall pick that now that Kyler's back there in Arizona, you know, it's not even on the Bears. It's it, on Fort. What sucks is Justin Fields doesn't even have an opportunity to push to pick down because Carolina is so bad that the Bears are going to end up with Carolina's first pick. Like, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where like the bears aren't going to be able to pass up, whether it be Drake may, whether it be Caleb Williams, it will talk about Caleb Williams later as well. So he, if anything, he needs to go out there and ball out and show that he could be that, you know, Atlanta Falcons quarterback, um, that he can go out there and be the quarterback for another franchise, uh, whether it be the New York jets, whether it be any other team out there, uh, that can use a quarterback. And there's many of them because, the quarterback market right now is still, it's in flux. I mean, the Vikings might need a quarterback next year, and they got a good team. He showcased himself for a lot of different teams out there, and he's an exciting uh, prospect that we've seen grow, and we've seen him succeed outside of just his running ability as well, like him pushing the ball downfield, that rapport with DJ Moore. And you know, and maybe, I'm not saying 100% no, you don't take Caleb Williams. If Justin Fields can show us enough, you know, maybe can hold on to that, and the Bears can go back-to-back -back and get huge hauls again – and really build around Justin Fields because I would love to see them really beef up that offensive line. I would yeah. love to see them get a, a dynamic running back uh, in that offense. I would love to see them add another receiver to JJ Moore. DJ Moore, you need yeah. two receivers out there. So for me, I mean, if there's any, I'll say this about here's here's the best thing I can say about Justin Fields and Dynasty. When the moment comes that the news breaks that the Bears are probably going to draft a quarterback and look for trade partners of Justin Fields. I'm using that window to buy a dip. Is that the mm. best way to say it then? Because yeah. I still believe in a player. I mean, no need to pussyfoot around here and, and, and go through why and all these different scenarios. If that happens, then I'm doing that. And if there's any window to buy Justin Fields now, I'm still doing that because you can look at this as where it's a win-win. We're like, Justin Fields loses his job, but it's not because of Justin Fields. It's just they found himself sure. a prospect they couldn't pass up on. If he stays, they will have so much draft capital to build around Justin Fields. Yeah. And he did enough for them to believe in him, to build around him with all that draft capital. So that's a win-win situation. As we've seen his ADP drop here every single week, I wouldn't be surprised that Kyler Murray uh, jumps him here very soon as well for how good he looked. I think it's probably, you know, a good buy window for Justin Fields. And definitely when you're playing Superflex, the number one, you're, like you're always looking for buy windows, but anytime there's a buy window on a young quarterback at all, you have to risk it, right? You have to jump in there and, and get it. So that's how I view Justin Fields here as we enter week 11 of the fantasy football season. Yeah, I'm 100% with you. And look at what he did 
the last two games before his injury. He had the number three overall quarterback finish and the number one overall quarterback finish on the week. So like two legitimate, legitimate finishes. And it wasn't because of his rushing ability. It was because he threw for four touchdown passes in each one of those games. So he was taking that next step forward and how quickly we forget about that. So I'm 100% with you. I think this is uh, offering maybe a potential buy window down the road. Obviously, while he was out, was a little bit of a buy window too. But I am still in. I think he's absolutely the starting quarterback for somebody next year. And it's it's only going to be an improved situation like you mentioned. It's either improved on the Bears because of all the draft picks or they go to somewhere with more weapons and a better offensive line. There's not too many situations he could go right now where it would be a worse situation for him offensively. Let's move on to the next guy. I know he's a personal favorite of yours uh, and, and the shows in general. Devon A. Chan, he was looking like an absolute world beater uh, those, those three, four games before his injury. He did sustain that injury. It was always a slight concern with somebody that was a little bit smaller like him, but he comes back and I mean, right now we obviously that he's missed some time, but right now in your rankings, how many running backs do you want over Devon Achan? Not many. I mean, he's to me, he's in that Jonathan Taylor realm, right? Like you can go either way. Like if you're like, hey, I'm taking Jonathan Taylor. Cool. You know, I'd have no problem taking honestly Devon Achan over Taylor. Um, I'd have no problem years. whatsoever. Yeah, because you're, you're all when it comes to running backs, you're always chasing years, right? That second contract is kind of like a negative um, in dynasty. So you're always chasing those years. You want that first contract. You want that first window. You want a you want a dynamic offense, like a guy that can you know surpass that first contract because of what they do and how they play in offense or in, you know, the Alvin Kamara's, uh, the Austin Eckler's, those guys that can kind of surpass and outlive into that second contract. And for me, that's what HN is. And I mean, yes, was it a small window? Of course, this is a guy who, you know, despite only playing in four games and only three with real usage, Gary, he's still running back 27 in PPR leagues. Hilarious. Still running back 27. And Yes, it's only three games, but like I don't just go off those three games. I go all off all the tape I watch. You know, like I got a lot of pushback when I went on. I came on the show and I said Devon A. Chan's my number four overall player, yeah. and people are like, "How can you put him ahead of Kincaid? How can you put him ahead of Jordan Addison? How can you put him ahead of Quentin Johnston? How can you put him ahead of Zay Flowers?" And I was like, "He's a dynamic running back," and I know it, it, it's weird how I look. I view some of these rookie drafts too because. I know the wide receiver is the long-term play in Dynasty, and during startups, I, I flip it, right? Like, I want I want those young receivers mm -hmm. in Dynasty. And it's why, you know, my number one strategy in Dynasty during startup is the fade running backs. Be totally okay grabbing some of those old guys, like, you know, the Joe Mixons, um, guys that have a couple years left into their contract, even a guy like Alvin Kamara. And attacking because now when I get to my rookie draft, I get attacked the young the running backs because young running backs are gold, right? Like when A Chan was cruising there, you could have got Jordan Addison plus Easily. for A Chan. You know, yep. he's putting you in the category to go out there and get the Devonte Smiths, you know, the young receivers. So even though they're the most fluid position on your roster, they are also one of the prospects outside of the superstar wide receiver one guys are under the age of twenty six. They're going to be your best bang for buck on return. Uh, because there, there's so many more few of, there's so few of them. And he's looked so dynamic in that offense. Raheem Mostert's been carrying the load out there. They've been using Salvin Ahmed. I know Jeff Wilson's back, but you got to think that Mike McDonald has got to be absolutely ecstatic to get this weapon back and put him in this offense because the, listen, the Dolphins haven't won a game since October. Yeah. So it's been a while. They can use some juice. And HM brings a lot of that juice to the offense. So I'm a, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, ecstatic. We talked about this on the show a couple of weeks ago. Will HM still finish, finish as a wide receiver one? And I do believe so. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I think he's absolutely that guy. We, we mentioned it on the show right after he was drafted. There wasn't a more perfect hand-in-glove fit with a player in a scheme than HM and the Dolphins. That has not changed uh, he's going to be an absolute stud from here on out. Uh, next couple guys, not as big of a deal, but does have a little bit of impact. Pat Fryermuth does come back, uh, which which takes a, a, a 
target or two away from guys like Deontay Johnson and George Pickens, which there's not a lot of quality targets to go around there in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, in, uh, in, in Kenny Pickett's career, I think he's played like 28 games and has 15 touchdown passes. So not a lot going on there. So it's just another mouth to feed. Uh, I don't really see much else other than that because he's not somebody I really want to start at the moment. No, he, he's a wait and see. No. Uh, but, I mean, his, his dynasty value doesn't change. You know, he's right there in that middle. The high, like, I mean, Cole 11, Komet, 12, Pat 13. Fryermuth. Yeah, like, what are, you, what are you really looking at here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Khalil Herbert comes back. He'll, he'll be joining Justin Fields uh, at the same time. We've been seeing Donta Foreman. He's actually been really, really good uh, yeah, for is. fantasy football purposes. So that is probably going to muddy things because they were also using using Roshan Johnson a little bit in the passing game. Unfortunately, I think it almost gets to the point where I'm not sure I can start any of them because there's just too many mouths to feed in that backfield. Do you have a better gauge on that than I do? I, yeah, I would wait and see how that all pans out. I mean, obviously the biggest loser is Roshan Johnson. Um, if anything tips up, cause I, th- I think Foreman's done too much to lose it. And that's the thing, like has Foreman done enough to lock himself in as the majority carry guy, but you know, Khalil Herbert was a starter beforehand. A lot of times teams don't like to let people lose their job for injury. So Herbert should get an yeah. opportunity to come in there and still produce. So we'll see how the snap share pr- plays itself out. But like you said, it's kind of risky, but I'm certainly not going out there and throwing, uh, Khalil Herbert into my starting lineup. Doesn't mean I wouldn't necessarily depends on the situation with bye weeks and how my team looks. Be afraid to put Deontay Foreman still back into my flex spot. Okay. Uh, Traylon Burks, he's had a, a rough season overall, uh, but does get the the, the big armed quarterback now, who's cooled off a little bit since his early uh, early stuff there. But Traylon Burks, the concussion, dealing with some other little nagging things. Sounds like he's going to be back, fully good to go. But another one that. More of a wait and see at this point. Not somebody you can really trust at the moment. Uh, Matthew Stafford's back probably this week, uh, which is really good news for that offense because guys like Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, uh, not nearly as usable as we've seen without Matthew Stafford there. Oh, yeah. It, it, he's a driving force. He's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And I mean, what do you, there's not a lot to say here. I mean, he's got Cooper Cup, he's got Puka. Puka's taking a big step down. But even Stafford, I mean, it's not like Stafford's even then still lighting a word on fire. He still hasn't scored 20 points in a game all season. Right. So, to me, if my quarterback can't give me these couple of 20-point games, then that's a huge problem. So, if, if, if it, for Stafford, it might be one of those windows where, you know, we've seen so many quarterbacks get lost to injury this year. We've seen a lot of people flounder. This might be, with him coming back, might be, the last best chance you have to sell him in a super flex league for a return. I mean, cause what would you take for Stafford right now? Like if you're like, you're not really in it at this point, you're, you're like the fifth, you know, in fifth place, you have long shot to make the playoffs. Even if you do get into playoffs, you're probably not going to cause any damage. So sure. like you're trying to offload points. Would you be a hat? Would you be okay with like a mid second and super flex league for Stafford? Or would you want a little bit more? Cause I know I feel like I would want more than just a second, but you, I feel like you have a hard time getting a first. Yeah, I don't think you're able to get a first. I think I would, I think I could settle for a mid second, but that would be the absolute lowest. Uh, but I'd, I'd be trying hard to get a higher second or a mid second, and then a little bit of extra on top. Yeah, with, with how strong this draft class is, when you get right around pick like probably eight through twelve. You know, every pick that goes by will probably be a pretty crucial pick when you're actually on the clock. They're like, oh, you just missed out on a guy. Um, we'll see how it sh- shakes out. So I wouldn't even be opposed to, hey, man, I'll give you my second, which is going to be like four in the second. And if I give you staff, you're probably going to win. So you got to butter him up a little bit, you know, make him feel good about himself. Uh, you know, your pick is probably going to be 112. So you're only moving down a couple spots. Like, that's the move I would want to make. I would love to right. get kind of up there a little bit higher. You know, if you're tight and premium, there'll probably be a very good quality tight end there. Maybe a couple of running backs that fall down because his receiving class is so deep. And if not, there'll certainly be a receiver there because depending on how many quarterbacks come out, they're really going to push some talent back down in this draft this year. So there will be some talent there. And maybe we'll find another Will Levis, right, who went the very back in the first and top of the second where 
you know, that's kind of where we had him in our rookie rankings. We were taking him right there at 112, mm -hmm. 2 1, 2 2. And that's shown to be really good value, too. So maybe we have a jab at another quarterback as well. So for me, I. I, I would much rather kind of try and do that, move up a couple spots than even just take a random stack, stab in the dark at a second, uh, which again, that's the worst case scenario that I would probably take for him. All right, last guy in the uninjury report. We might be getting back Justin Jefferson this week. It's interesting. The Vikings uh, had one win or two wins. It wasn't a lot with Justin Jefferson there. Since Justin Jefferson's been out, they have won every single game. Uh, yeah. So kind of an odd stat there, but obviously they're very excited to get him back. He's the best I receiver in football. I, I mean, he sold his team back, so I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, maybe know. he's not. Yeah, and I, and I want to apologize. I said last week on the show that Josh Dobbs was not good. I said on the show, I said, like, Garrett, have you even watched like all the tape? Like he's not good. He played, he played fantastic um, in an S zero. So I, uh, I was wrong. You know, Dobbs looked good enough there where he should at least get an opportunity to quarterback that well he will be the quarterback for the rest of the year but sure let's see how far they go if they can keep winning and get justin jefferson back maybe he'll have an opportunity to go in and be the quarterback next year as well because i think he's starting really to deserve it you know i i don't care about all the hype of like oh look he came in here and in two weeks he did this that, that doesn't mean anything to me it's about how you get out of there on a play he made some really good plays on the move getting outside the pocket avoiding the pressure driving the ball downfield good accuracy Good power on his arm as well. Uh, a lot of things that I did, I really haven't seen a ton of out of Josh Jobs, to be honest with you. It figures I come out here and say this guy's no good whatsoever. He goes out there probably at the best. Might have been the best game I've seen him play. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's exciting time. Anytime you get Justin Jefferson back, many dynasty teams need him. But, I mean, you would imagine there's probably a lot of teams are out of it at this point as well that had Justin Jefferson because that's a tough player to lose when you do have him. Let's also make sure we talk about FFPC. That's right. Launched in 2010, FFPC is the home to the largest high stakes dynasty league community community in fantasy football. But you know what? Even when it is not off season, even when we're not drafting, there's still things to do. In season, FFPC has launched its weekly challenge. Weekly. There's no draft, no salary cap, no convoluted rules, just 10 team, 30 team, or 100 team contest. Pick your players by Sunday's 1 p.m. start and let them ride. Results will be determined by the total points accumulated by each lineup entry. Get $25 off a $35 or $200 entry by using the promo code NERDS. Go to myffpc.com. That's myffpc.com. Visit the weekly challenge. And use promo code NERDS for $25 off any entry for new members. All right, let's get into a couple topics uh, that we want to discuss here. Uh, and it's it's kind of a quarterback-driven show uh, this, this week here. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, first game back, and there was a, a lot of skepticism on, you know, it's it's new coach, it's his first game back, it's an ACL, what's he going to do? The team hasn't played super well. Is he jiving? He looked fantastic. Like, he looked like his old self. There was that uh, awesome angle of the big run that he had late in the game uh, where it's just flowing his helmet around from the aerial view. And, man, like his footwork looked good. He trusted it. Like, you know, sometimes when guys have, like, knee stuff, you can tell they don't, like, trust it all the way. He It looked like he trusted it. He felt good about it. Moving he threw the ball pretty well as well. So the buying window is probably shut now. You know, we, we've talked a few weeks now where, you know, potential buy window on a guy like Kyler Murray, that's shut now. You're going to have to pay whatever you – you were going to have to pay before his injury that it's back to full price. But all of that being said, the quarterback position has been a really interesting one this year. Where do we put Kyler Murray in this group? Uh, he looked dynamic. He looked, you said it best. He looked like the old Kyler Murray and it, it's Hill and you're, and you're dead on too about the buy window because you and I are in a league together. It's all UDPL league, the ultimate yeah. dynasty podcast. Like it's just a whole bunch of dynasty podcast hosts. And I've been trying to sell Kyler in that league. I'm just trying to gain assets. Yep. My team's bad. I have no, I have one receiver. I got Noah Brown too, but I got Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'll have the second pick of that. My team's so bad, but I still won't have the first pick. I'll have the second pick. And I'll see if I get Drake May or Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm going to try and trade back to get Marvin Harrison Jr. We'll see. Because I have Pat Mahomes, I have Kyler Murray, and I have Daniel Jones. Yeah. And, and I got three offers for Kyler Murray in the last two days. And all of them are still like, 
offering that buy window. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. hey, like, where's that discount? And I was like, man, Should've Kyler looked dynamic. Ago. And, you know, the fact that his legs look like old Kyler legs, that's where the juice is. But he had a couple deep balls, too. You know, you know Kyler's always been accurate pushing a ball downfield. So it's just about him is maintaining that health. Uh, if he does, he's a top five, usually overall score in fantasy football quarterback. He gets it yeah. done on all facets. He can attack all three uh, phases of the field. So, yeah, he's back. And where is he in my overall rankings? I don't know because if Kyler's back, do you want Kyler Murray? Do you want Trevor Lawrence? You know, well, like- that's a good that's a good point. And Trevor Lawrence, we, we touched on it quickly last week when we were talking about, or maybe it was two weeks ago, we were talking about C.J. Stroud. Like, is it time to put C.J. Stroud maybe ahead of him? And, you know, we brought up, like, Trevor has mostly done this on hype. His actual production for fantasy football has not been very good, and he didn't do anything this week to make us feel any better. Now, it was the 49ers, and they have a good defense, so not many players do well, but another game with no touchdown passes, two interceptions. like He just hasn't looked like that guy. So, honestly, it's Kyler Murray, and it feels like that should be hard, but pretty easily Kyler Murray for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say easily because I would love to know what's going on here because – we had a bad year of Trevor Lawrence. Um, then we had a good year of Trevor Lawrence. Now we're another bad year of Trevor Lawrence. And for quarterbacks, the the last thing in the world I want is a roller coaster player because that's a player I have to get my lineup every single week. You know, definitely in Superflex, there's not a lot of options on your bench to really rotate through. And if you have a guy like Trevor Lawrence, because even again, you know, a mid-range quarterback two to low-end quarterback two is still a top 70 overall score and player. So you want to get him in there. But even though saying that, that's not enough to be a championship caliber player. So I am not necessarily ready to just propel Kyler up there because I, I still will always be worried about the injuries with Kyler just because of the way that he plays the game and his size. But it's really close. I'll, I'll say that. And... You know, when you're looking at quarterbacks right now, like who's the king of the crops? I mean, Josh Dobbs is quarterback seven. Um, C.J. Stroud is climbing every single week. Jordan Lo- Jordan Love, who nobody's just out here and pound the table for that's having a good year. So talking Trevor Lawrence, like just not getting it done. Jordan Love is quarterback 13 on the year. So where are the excuse? Like this market's crazy, right? Like Jared Goff is somebody doing like he's a quarterback 12. Brock Purdy's quarterback 11. Um, Sam Howell is quarterback three and leads the NFL in passing yards. It, 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 it's been a really wonky year this year in, in, in fantasy as a whole because everywhere you look from the receiver, the quarterbacks, it's very weird. If you look at the running back situation right now, I tweeted this out earlier, just like we expected. Raheem Mostert, quarter, running back two. Brian Robinson, running back six. Rashad Wright, White, running back eight. Zach Moss running back 11 as we enter week 11, you know, 11 of the season. It's insane. And I feel just as wonky as the quarterbacks. One, we've lost a ton to injuries. Yeah. Guys that we thought were going to take steps forward, Justin Fields has been injured and not taken a big step forward. Trevor Lawrence has regressed. Um, you know, Jordan Love wasn't wasn't great. Uh, and then Joe guys Burrow that have, had a slow start to the year. Joe, yeah, and I'm that's that's moot to me. That means nothing. for sure, but that's why he's uh, at quarterback seventeen right now. Yeah, but still, I mean that's a, that doesn't overall value wise it doesn't worry me. But there's sure, a lot of guys sure, sure. like Kirk Cousins tearing his Achilles. That's that's a value um, somewhat to, to me. Guys that had long term, you know, expectations of Jordan Love, you know, that's somewhat taking a hit. Kenny uh, Pickett uh, and Bryce there. Young have both disappointed. I mean, at least Kenny Pickett's not turning the football over. You know, he but he scored it, six points last week in fantasy. I know he's not great, but he's. A, Maybe I, maybe you can argue real life, but fantasy, no, his last no three good. weeks are 3.9, 10.3, and 6.6. But I feel like I know Kenny Pickett will be the st- starting quarterback for the Steelers next year. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, jobs are on the line. Like, Josh sure. Dobbs might have a job next year. Like, Sam Howell has seemed to, like, kind of cement himself there in Washington. So, Kyler's a very interesting player. But the fact that everything else has been so wonky, that's what's really moving Kyler up. Um, and he's always been, you know, a top, you know, late first start up when he's healthy, um, high second. But I think with that big ACL injury there, that I think that just more cements like, Hey, that, that he's, he could potentially just be gone at any second. That's any player. 
But Kyler's just whole diminutive of size just really is a big setback. Right. Real quick, so we know Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, and Joe Burrow. All five of those guys clearly ahead of him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then after that, Lamar Jackson, you probably still have ahead of him, right? Yes. Okay. Then we get into this this range where it gets interesting. Would you rather have him or would you rather have – let's go with Dak Prescott, who's played really well the past few weeks. I would take Kyler because of age. Okay. That's uh, close for me. Uh, I'll go Kyler, I think, but it's really close. Uh, would you rather Tua or – Tua. I think I would rather Tua as well. What about C.J. Stroud? Oh, Stroud. Yeah. Yeah. Give me give me the youth and the uncanny numbers he's starting to put up here. Last Nobody two, uh, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff. You'd rather Curry, uh, Kyler Murray above both those guys, right? Yeah. But they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're right behind them. Sure. Like right behind them. And definitely Purdy because Purdy's been getting done week in, week out for the most part. I mean, he had a couple, couple week window there where the Broncos lost. Right before the Broncos lost. Yeah. yeah lost a couple of games. Let's see. You know, he came back this week, played well again. He did. And let's. We said that. We said it as we went to buy. Like because we were talking about Purdy a couple of weeks ago. Like, and we and we were talking like, are we worried about Purdy? And I was like, I want to see Purdy come after the buy. Yeah. That's why I want to see him come out of the buy and see if Kyle Shanahan can fix him, which I totally thought he could, and he looked much better. He did. You know, and it, it, in some of those points, you know, with the Debo end around, uh, there's still pretty high ceiling for Purdy. I think. I think just in that offense, we've talked about it a thousand times. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Uh, he does offer, you know, not just sexiness by name and the way he overall plays, but from fantasy football production, he does offer that juice. Well, let's let's go ahead and talk about Baker Mayfield then. Uh, Baker has been pretty hot as of late. He has been a quarterback one for four consecutive weeks. He's likely never going to be the top six, top eight type of guy just because you, you said it. He doesn't have that rushing ability. Can he move around a little bit? Can he make a play here and there? Sure. But he's not going to be the kind of guy that's going to put up 60 and 70 yard rushing games. That's just not in his, his skill set. But how far away are we from considering him and where for a long time we had guys like Kirk Cousins? Where are we at, guys Perfect like example. Jared Goff? Perfect example. Uh, Derek Carr was in there for a while, not as much anymore. But guys that we had right there in that fringe quarterback one, high-end quarterback two, how far away is Baker Mayfield from reaching that range? He, Not far. He's there. There's no reaching. He's there for me. Like Basically, if you want a seven-year younger Kirk Cousins, that's the move, right? Like guys that can be overly mobile, but like come out there, Look good, win you some games. You know, you have a couple of duds here and there. We'll throw some picks, or you know, you know not winning a big game. But from a fantasy football standpoint, he's 28 years old. You got, I mean, Kirk Cousins 35. So if you're looking right. for that window to get younger, and Kirk Cousins was worth a first, you know, for these last couple of years in his mid 30s. I mean, you can argue from like 33 on. 32, 33, he was having his best overall, from a fantasy football yeah. uh, standpoint, his best overall production, where he was always flirting with, like, quarterback 14, 13. He started running into that quarterback 8, quarterback 9 range. So, out of all the guys we talked about, the cheapest option is Baker Mayfield because Kyler seems like he's secure. Deshaun Watson's secure in the contract. Baker Mayfield's a free agent after this year. Now, do I think he resigns with the Buccaneers? Absolutely, too, because the quarterback market's abysmal. There's nobody out there. Same reason why Josh Dobbs is going to be okay, and, and guys like Sam Howell will be okay. Not enough quarterbacks to go around. So I do think Baker maybe will be back. And I think in a super flex league, if you're a contender, you could probably get Baker Mayfield for a late first. You might have to throw a little couple sprinkles on top of that ice cream, but I'm buying. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat, and that's why I wanted to, to talk about him in here because I think – you know, with how things ended in Cleveland and then the whole experiment in Carolina just didn't really work out. Then all of a sudden he's in L.A. and he actually showed a little bit in L.A. with McVay. And and uh, Baker was like, you know, that was the first coach that I really felt like actually believed in me and believed in my abilities. And then he's on his fourth team in like a year and a half. And I think people just kind of 
thought he was washed, and, and understandably so. Quarterbacks that are typically starters do not move teams that many times in that short of a time frame. But he's a guy that was the first overall pick, has had at least a decent track record of success in the NFL, uh, better than guys like Sam Darnold and guys like that. So he's had some decent seasons under his belt, and it shows when he has a competent team around him, which I don't think Tampa Bay by any stretch of the imagination is a great team, but it's a competent team with good receivers, an okay line, and, you know, Rashad White, which whatever you want to say about him. Uh, you know, like, competent team. Not great, not bad, just competent. He's shown that he can be a valuable fantasy football asset and a valuable NFL asset. And that's all he needs to do is just continue to be a valuable NFL asset because you can be a quarterback for the long time in the NFL as long as you can be competent because there's so few competent quarterbacks available. You have 15 to 20 competent quarterbacks and then 10 other guys that you're hoping can end up being that type of level. Yeah, get past the narrative and find the value. And in super flex leagues, there's tons of valiant quarterbacks where they can be had and, and find somebody you could kind of just be, even if it's, if it's your quarterback two, low end quarterback one, th there's tons of value in the quarterback. And I'll now say it for the 800th time, buy dips on quarterbacks that you feel have, you know, some value to produce. Like even Jordan Love, you know, Jordan Love's quarterback 13 and he might not be the quarterback in Green Bay next year, but they did give him that other year on that contract. So there's a lot of other holes that Green Bay has outside outside of quarterback as well. And, and, and this is still his first year starting in the NFL. So these guys need time to grow. Even Baker mm -hmm. needs time to grow. He had to deal with some injuries. He had success. He's gone through a whirlwind. He needs to settle his feet and get that consistency. We we said it, I think, on the last show, like these offenses that need to hold their coaching staffs together, to hold these teams together, to really build something. That's where a lot of success comes. So yeah, there are a couple of quarterbacks to go out there and transcend that. Guys like, you know, what kind of see out of CJ Stroud, really? He's kind of transcended his situation with the talent he has around him. Um, unless they're all coming together at the same time as a perfect storm with the coach, mm -hmm. the you know, the wide receivers. But you know, like the Pat Mahomes. Um, even Josh Allen right now, struggling. Uh yes. throw, you know, has the most turnovers in the league. His receivers are dropping some footballs. He, he, his accuracy is kind of taking a step back here. I'm sure he's missing Brian Dable. Somebody gets fired there in, uh, in New York. He'd openly have a, sh a job back there in Buffalo. So yeah. yeah, man, Baker Mayfield, I think out of all the quarterbacks we're talking about, the best value, the best bang would be Baker Mayfield. I think the highest upside would be Kyler Murray. Agreed. Yeah. And, and just to kind of put the cherry on top, you mentioned in the UDPL, how you had Kyler Murray available. I didn't have the draft assets to go get a guy like Kyler Murray in that league, but I needed a quarterback. So I went after Baker Mayfield and I gave this was, this was at the end of October, right after Zach Wilson's uh, big game against Kansas city there. But in that game, uh, you know, people started like, Oh, maybe, maybe there's a little something there. So I traded Zach Wilson. And at the time, what seemed like an overpay a second and a third to get Baker Mayfield. And now I'm thrilled that I have Baker Mayfield for that because Zach Wilson is who we thought so he you, was. You gave a second and a third for Baker Mayfield. Yes, I gave a second and third uh, for Baker Mayfield. And and to to emphasize it more, the, the second wasn't even until 25. So it's not even a second oh, this year. Better. Second and 25 and then a third and 24. So, uh, you oh. know, he was pretty cheap. He was pretty cheap a few weeks ago. That price has gone up, but it's still probably worth the squeeze. It's in, it's in that range. And boy, was I wrong on Zach Wilson. I mean, I had him going through the process. He was my number two overall quarterback going in that draft class. And they got drafted number two, yeah. which made me feel like, you know, when it happens, they get kind of like the Devon Achan thing where yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I'm sitting there like pat myself on the back about Devon Achan. It can go just the other way where like I had Zach Wilson as my number two quarterback in that draft class and they got drafted by the Jets and I still hit him at number two and he's no Devon Achan. No, so no. I'll say we that, so... We, we, we've all had those guys in quarterback out of any position, the toughest one to evaluate because you can see everything on the field, but you never know quite what's going on between the years. So toughest yeah, position to evaluate in all of football. All right, let's get out of here. Let's jump into this Nerd Herd show. I got to see some of these Nerd Herd questions. Uh, I'm excited for it. We'll be back next week live and in person with uh, Matt. And then the, as we get into Thanksgiving uh, weeks, so we got a lot of football here. We inch closer and closer to playoffs. The end of 
of the fantasy seasons right around the corner. But let's uh, let's make this final push. Let's find some good value. Let's make some good trades. If we're if we're good, if we're contenders, let's really start focusing on that championship, right? Like acquiring some depth, guys. Like just don't look at the big names. Uh, find some guys, whether it be even a guy like Noah Brown, right? It's just he's riding that hot streak. Find players that are are looking good. The Rashad Whites, the guys that are currently running hot, or least in position to produce, let's not be afraid out there and go attack those guys. Let's find guys that could be your wide receiver three, wide receiver four, in case something happens down the ride. Let's be prepared. Let's let's put ourselves in position to attack that ship. If you're rebuilding, offload everything. Like, be, this is your time to be super aggressive. Like, you've had a lot, a lot of weeks now here to kind of start offloading, and it's hard because people are trying to see where they stand, but now these next couple of weeks are coming along. It, it's no more about, hey, I, I want this. You got to really start focus on here and sooner the better on take what you can get. And that some people might tell you that's a terrible way to play, but the longer those guys are in your roster, the more points you're scoring and you're really taking away from getting that really high value. Cause this year's draft class top four is really want to be right up there to get some elite, you know, franchise changing team changing players. So the quicker you get these players off your roster, the quicker you can get to the bottom, which is where you want to be. And, Again, going back to those contenders, I say this every single year, but don't be afraid to make the small trades. Start grabbing, like find those teams on the bottom and find those guys like the Noah Browns. Find those guys that those guys want to unload that aren't putting up big numbers, maybe they're wide receiver threes, but don't be like, grab a little bit depth for third, fourth round picks. Because you're talking about pick 36, 35, 34 in this rookie class. The odds of that player ever helping your team are almost slim to none. Like that's how low your odds are. So grab some players that can help you People are like, well, he's only going to help me for the next three to six weeks. I would rather have somebody to help me just for two to f- two to three weeks at all sure. to help me win one playoff game or one more game to get a higher seed than a, to take a chance on some guy that I will probably never even promote off my taxi squad. So you hear that a lot. We're in Dynasty. Like, oh, he's only going to help me out for a couple good weeks. Okay, well, there's only a couple more weeks left in the season, buddy. Like, <laughs> what else do you need? Go out there. Make those moves. You know, we we say it all the time. We 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 value those draft picks a little bit less than most other dynasty sites because the proof is in the pudding. And we're giving those stats over and over. So let's have a good week this week. Come back. Let's have another good injury week. Yes. And we'll, we'll go, talk about week 11 next week. Deuces.